Welcome to today's episode of the Professional Book Nerds podcast presented by Overdrive. This is Joe. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're hoping to hit you with some nostalgia, with some truly summery vibes, because today is all about summer camp reads. If you went to summer camp, if you loved the movies of the early aughts about summer camp, this episode is definitely a treat for you. Of course, we've also expanded to summer camp adjacent things, you know, if it is the vibe. It could be people on a vacation at a camp-like property, you know, all of that good stuff. So just some caveats, but then of course I have to say all the podcaster things. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you do your listening. We love to see those reviews come through. You can follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at ProBookNerds. And then, of course, you can reach out to us via email. Our email is professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com. With all of that out of the way, I am joined by Emma and Kristen today to talk summer camp books. Hi, everyone. Hey. Emma's dying. As I'm choking, I'm about to say hello. Hi, hello. <laughs> hello. Did either of you go to summer camp? I did every single summer from when I was uh, one to 18. And then I worked at that summer camp the summer I was 20. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Was it a sleepaway camp? (laughs) It was. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming not from like one. Right. So when I was a child up till high school, it was family camp. So I was there with my parents and my siblings And then when I got to high school, I would do a week of family camp, obviously with the whole family. And then I would stay the additional week for high school camp that followed. So it was like vacation for the family. It was. It was something we did every single year. And I obviously did the high school thing. It was quite a time. I have very fond memories of summer camp to the point that I actually have looked at already things that I would love to send my child to. In the hopes that he enjoys summer camp. He's way too young now, but... um, Pass on that tradition. Yeah, I would love to. That'd be so fun. That's also giving me very, like, dirty dancing of, like, the families who went away to a camp for the summer. Uh Yeah. Very 60s. It was fun because we had, like, camp families that we would see every single year. My mom still gets Christmas cards from these various camp families, and it's really weird to see everyone, like, grown. Did you have camp besties? I did, yes. Are you a pro at making friendship bracelets? I am. And those like lizard keychain things. <gasps> yeah. Remember, like made out of yep. beads. beads. I, I surely do. I'm a pro at those. Uh, but then I have to ask, where's my friendship bracelet? Uh okay. No, actually though, actually though, goals for the summer. Goals for the summer. Goals for the summer. But I'm very fond of this whole episode. It's making me really nostalgic. Yes. Kristen, did you go camping, do summer camp activities like that? Yeah. So first and foremost, I was obsessed with the TV show Bug Juice. Did you guys watch that show? I loved that show so much. It was like the first reality TV show for children. I was muted, but you didn't hear me absolutely gasp when you said (laughs) Bug Juice. (laughs) I will sing the theme song at random. Oh, me too. All the time. It's bad. (laughs) I will not sing it here because no one needs to hear that. But anyone listening should go look up that song. Now I'm like, where can we watch it? I don't know. It was streaming. Is it on Disney Plus? (laughs) I bet it's terrible. Like rewatching it, I'd probably be like, wow. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was reality TV about these like, you know, like tweens who go to summer camp and about all the things that they get into, the friendships they make, the boy and girl drama and, Mm -hmm. you know, summer love. And it was just awesome. So that made me really want to go to summer camp. And then I did go to summer camp once. (laughs) Oh, um, did it go so well? (laughs) I wrote a letter home asking my mother to please come get me. Summer camp is terrible and I hate it. Oh no. <laughs> the the homesick uh, thing though is very real when you're young. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, or or not young, but like it's very jarring to be away from home. Yeah, yeah. It was very hard. And I feel like that experience kind of then set me up for like, 
I need to push myself to, you know, not be such a homebody, like get out, go do things. So it, it was great. I'm glad I did it. I'm happy I have that experience, but it was not an experience that I enjoyed in the moment. Yeah. Joe, did you go to summer camp or were you a camper? I, I was Are not you a, a camper. <laughs> you know, my dream is to get a, a little teardrop RV to attach to the back of my Jeep and just pick up at random so Roscoe and I can go and vibe out in the woods. Uh, growing up, one of my best friends, his family had a cottage that was situated right across from Mohegan State Park. So we went there very often, but, you know, we're talking power plumbing you know it was a house in the woods so so that's about as much as I get up to but um all jokes aside one summer I went to band camp I I know I was trying to say that carefully because Emma was about to take a sip and I just didn't want the explosion um thank so one, you <laughs> yeah one summer I went to band camp uh, I was at BW and it was like a week long where you stayed in a dorm and you went and you just did all of these practices and performances and then it culminates in the end with like a concert for your family and it was a wild time <laughs> yeah we're like all I'm alluding at like high school camp yeah um, we're just yeah yeah what happens at camp <laughs> just stays at camp oh. yeah um <laughs> mostly unsupervised high schoolers yeah I don't remember how old I was it was somewhere between like it might have been the summer of middle to high school so it wasn't as wild as it could have been but yeah. um, it was still pretty wild that's so funny sounds like a good time uh, can I ask, uh, what did you play in band? What was your instrument? The clarinet. I played the clarinet for a very long time through college. I would love it right now if you just like whipped out the clarinet and you're like, well, since you're asking. Well, since you're asking, let me play a little something for everyone. And then I was the drum major my senior year of high school and we were military style. It was very Ohio State. So I did a lot of throwing and catching of giant sticks and metal things and whatnot. That is so impressive. <laughs> Did you have a whistle? I had a whistle. I had a giant fuzzy hat. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I dare us if we have them to find photos of us at summer camp to use and we will post them on Instagram for this episode. <laughs> well, if you are looking for the vibes of summer camp or camping and backpacking and all of that good stuff. We have some titles for you. Kristen, do you want to kick us off? I'm very excited about your first book. I would love to. Um, so, you know, I have to bring the spooky vibes because it's just who I am. I'm going to start off by talking about a book that recently came out. It is You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Barron. Uh, welcome to Camp Mirror Lake, where the waters are cool, the camp counselors are a bit lackadaisical, and oh my god, is that man carrying a machete? Charity works as the final girl at Camp Mirror Lake, a terror game where people pay to their favorite slasher, Curse of Camp Mirror Lake. Charity loves her role and enjoys her summers at the camp. She's not as enthused about her co-workers, who just skipped out on everyone. But that's when she calls in for backups. Her girlfriend, Bessie, and her other friend come to camp to help with the final two nights of the job. But maybe the game is about to take a turn. And at the end of this book, perhaps no one will get the I survived Camp Mirror Lake and all I got was this dumb shirt shirt. If you're looking for uh, something that is a slasher, something that is really fun and fast paced, this is a great book for you. If you want more Friday the 13th kind of vibes, this is an excellent book. Um, I'm about halfway through it and it is just, it's so fun. Um, I was listening to it all of yesterday because it came out yesterday and I'm not sure when this comes out. <gasps> Joe, you too? <laughs> yeah, I got my hold yesterday when it released and I'm about 30% through. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it will have been out for about a for almost a month when this episode airs, but listeners are in for a treat. This yes. book is so much fun. It's like really fresh. It is. And I I'm like 
waiting because it feels like it's going to slowly start revealing more things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it's going to end up being more of a traditional slasher or if it's going to, you know, kind of go off the rails a little. So I'm very intrigued. This is uh, meant for young adults. So it's okay for a bit of a younger audience as well. I cannot wait to read this. I'm so glad you mentioned it because we, yes. It fits the vibe perfectly. It is great for summer. So yeah, it came out at the right time. Well, I also want to hit us with a spooky one. I think all of my picks, most of my, yeah, like half of my picks are are pretty spooky. And what would it be on the Professional Book Nerds podcast if I didn't mention Riley Sager? So this is The Last Time I Lied, his version of a summer camp book. It is an adult title, uh, fiction, suspense, thriller kind of vibe. Two Truths and a Lie. Vivian, Natalie, Allison, and Emma played it all the time in their cabin at Camp Nightingale. But the games ended the night Emma sleepily watched the others sneak into the darkness. The last she or anyone else saw of the teenagers was Vivian closing the cabin door behind her, hushing Emma with a finger pressed to her lips. Fifteen years later, Emma is a rising star in the New York art scene, turning her past into paintings, massive canvases filled with dark leaves and gnarled branches over ghostly shapes in white dresses. When the paintings catch the attention of a wealthy owner, the wealthy owner of Camp Nightingale, she implores Emma to come back to the newly reopened camp as a painting instructor. Despite her guilt and anxiety, or maybe because of them, Emma agrees to revisit her past. Nightingale looks the same as it did all those years ago, haunted by a midnight dark lake and familiar faces. Emma is even assigned the same cabin she slept in as a teenager, although the security camera pointed at her door is a disturbing new addition. As cryptic clues about the camp's origin begin to surface, Emma attempts to find out what really happened to her friends, but her closure could come at a deadly price. It's got all the hallmarks you expect from a Riley Sager book. There are uh, hot handyman equivalents. There are creepy people. Uh, You don't know who you can or can't trust. And then, of course, once again, playing with that, is it supernatural? Is it something happening in real life? What is the blend of you know, your own struggles with grief and trauma manifesting in a lot of different ways. What is perhaps a ghost? You'll have to read it and find out. So that is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I've heard you talk about how good that one is. So I did finally just read it this last weekend and it is absolutely the perfect summer camp vibe. I love that we can check things with you, Emma, to be like, is this like summer camp? Have you read it? Is this what summer camp is? <laughs> it, it was definitely summer campy. Was summer camp like this? <laughs> was it like full of murderers? No. But, <laughs> I was going to say, was it was it really like that? Or <laughs> But uh, like the descriptions, like the lake, there's there was a body of water when we were at camp, the woods, the way all of that felt. Um, the camp I went to also had like a lodge building and then cabins. So like trekking down to the latrine for like showers and stuff. Yeah. So can can confirm. Emma, how about your first book? So my first pick is a straight up summer camp book. Some of mine are a little more summer vibes, but they all relate, I promise. But this first one is a summer camp book, tried and true. And that's You Have a Match by Emma Lord. So it's never a good idea to sign up for a DNA test. That's pretty much what books and TikTok have taught me. Um, Abby takes a DNA test. She's pretty confident that it will affirm everything she knows about herself. And she's only doing it so that her best friend and secret love interest, Leo, will do it. It's just about solidarity. Uh, But shockingly, Abby gets her DNA results back and she finds out she has an older sister that she didn't know about. That sister is Instagram famous, Savannah Tully, and they're only a year and a half apart in age. The sisters feel like they have absolutely nothing in common. So obviously, how do you get to know one another when you're long lost sisters? You meet at summer camp. Duh. And so they both go to the same summer camp and try to figure out why their parents gave Savannah up for adoption. It's definitely parent trap style vibes. 
But um, who else is at that summer camp? Very conveniently, Abby's crush and best friend, Leo, who things have been super awkward with since the incident. Uh, So sibling personalities collide as they try to figure out the secret that their parents have been keeping all while navigating teen drama and romance. You have a match by Emma Lord. Well, that sounds like fun. I love some parent trap trap vibe. We love a good parent trap story. And I do like the sort of additional layer that her surprise your sister is someone you're, you know, and is famous on Instagram. It definitely makes it feel very contemporary. When did this one come out? Do you know? This book came out in January of 2021. So pretty recent. Nice. Um, Okay. I want to talk about, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about this author and this series several times before, but this is um, a different book in the series. So this is Really Truly by Heather Vogel Frederick. It is the third book in the middle grade series, Pumpkin Falls Mysteries. Uh, And this is about Truly, who is so excited for summer in her small town. She has plans to help her parents at their bookstore, go for swims, and hang out with the Pumpkin Falls private eyes. Then some of her friends decide they want to go to mermaid camp and Truly gets begrudgingly roped into it as well. Once Truly and her friends get back to Pumpkin Falls, a mystery awaits. Is there sunken treasure in the local lake? And how many pirates were involved in the founding of Pumpkin Falls? A question we should all ask ourselves about our own towns. Um, I love this series. And this book was really cute because the protagonist, Truly, she like does not want to go to this mermaid camp. She had plans for her summer and now they're kind of derailed. But it's a story about, you know, again, how sometimes even plans that we hadn't planned on can be really fun. She ends up having a really good time. And it's so cute to see this camp that is not your traditional we're in the woods kind of summer camp. This one is they literally spend all day in a pool learning how to do synchronized swimming with mermaid tails on. And it's adorable. Um, So this was Really Truly by Heather Vogel Frederick. That is so cute. And I love the titles of all of the truly madly sheeply, like it's so (laughs) cute. They're adorable. Also that concept of like, I think of the joke of, do you want to play mermaids? Like if your friend had the pool, the idea of having mermaid camp is adorable. It's adorable. It's very cute. And it was something where I was like, I feel like the mermaid tale is maybe still really hot, but was something a couple of years ago. I remember being all over Instagram and just lots of people with their mermaid tails. Well, there's no good transition for my next pick because this is also not your typical summer camp. And it's also kind of a heavy camp indeed. This is Surrender Your Sons by Adam Sass, friend of the pod. This uh, came out in September of 2020. It's a YA mystery thriller that expertly blends together humor, horror, and art in a wholly unique read like no other. It's a blend of Lost and Lord of the Flies, just with gay teenagers taking the horrors of the world head on. Connor Major's summer break is turning into a nightmare. His SAT scores bombed, the old man he delivers meals to died, and when he came out to his religious zealot mother, she had him kidnapped and shipped off to a secluded island. His final destination, Nightlight Ministries, a conversion therapy camp that will be his new home until he changes. But Connor's troubles are only beginning. At Nightlight, everyone has something to hide. From the campers to the converted, quotes on that, staff and cagey camp director, and it quickly becomes clear that no one is safe. Connor plans to escape and bring the other kidnapped teens with him, but first he's exposing the camp's horrible truths for what they are and taking this place down. So that is Surrender Your Sons by Adam Sass. Um, That sounds excellent and also reminds me of Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle, which is coming out this summer. Um, Have you read that one yet, Joe? I haven't read Camp Damascus yet, but Holly and I just talked about it for our Pride Reads. 
but this this was a fantastic read. Uh, the audiobook is also top tier, uh, but Daniel Henning is one of my faves. If you've seen on our Instagram, you already know he's on our <laughs> on our list of some fave narrators. But it is, whew, it is good. You've got it, like the the thrills are there, the mystery is there. There are murders they're trying to solve, all while trying to escape the horrors of this conversion camp. I have realized that my picks are in classic Emma fashion, either super sweet and summery or like murder camp thriller. So they're in absolutely no order. So we're just going to like go wildly between (laughs) those two vibes as I usually do. So my next pick is The Wild One by Colleen McKeegan. This came out in June of 2022. So about a year ago. This, why is it always three girls? Um, But three girls have been hiding a dark secret for over 10 years. So very much the last time I lied vibes. They don't talk about what happened that night at Camp Catalapa when a man died in the woods. Amanda, Catherine, and Meg have all kept their pact to never speak of that night until now. Amanda slips and tells the truth to her boyfriend. And the truth threatens to rip apart her picture-perfect life. Amanda turns to Catherine and Meg for the first time in a decade for help and to try to put their past to rest. But how far will these women go to keep the truth dead and buried? Puns intended. Uh, This also has a then and now style narrative that I enjoy where as the reader, you're slowly putting the pieces together from what happened 10 years ago to how it's impacting these women now. So this is The Wild One by Colleen McKeegan. I love it. Yes. So good. Okay. Um, I am going to skip ahead in my own order just because I feel like the next book I'm going to bring up is kind of similar to uh, what up. This is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. Camp Forevermore is the kind of idyllic kids getaway where you can swim, do some crafts, roast marshmallows, and make lifelong friendships. A group of girls decides to go on an overnight kayaking trip to a nearby island, but they find themselves stranded without adult supervision and assistance, and they don't know how to get home. The book then follows them to see how this same experience lends itself to their development through their heartbreaks, failures, relationships, and careers. It's about how people define themselves, how friendships are built, and how different people build themselves off of an inescapable past. That is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. That one really does sound like camp vibes. Yes, it sounds like you said idyllic. It's got it's got everything right there. Yeah, it takes place in the Pacific Northwest, so also very much like oh, all the big trees and water, ocean, lakes. Yeah, just beautiful. Uh, now I just want to go on like a summer camp trip right now. I know, I know. It really <sighs> does make me nostalgic every summer for like the woods. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, my next pick is a graphic novel because summer to me, I know I've already described my need of thrillers and camp books and this adjacent situation we've been going through, but I also need manga, graphic novels, all of that right now because I like something that I can take outside with me and just kind of breeze through. So this is Flamer by Mike Curato. I know I'm not gay. Gay boys like other boys. I hate boys. They're mean and scary, and they're always destroying something or saying something dumb or both. I hate that word, gay. It makes me feel unsafe. It's the summer between middle school and high school, and Aiden Navarro is away at camp. Everyone's going through changes, but for Aiden, the stakes feel higher. As he navigates friendships, deals with bullies, and spend times with Elias, a boy he can't stop thinking about, he finds himself on a path of self-discovery and acceptance. So that is Flamer by Mike Curado. I have been meaning to read that book forever, and mm-hmm. it sounds so good. Again, like a perfect summertime read. Right. 
My next pick is a sweet and summery read, Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This book comes out October 3rd, so you do have to wait. Put your holds on Libby now. You should probably know Hannah Grace's name by now. Her book Icebreaker took TikTok by storm, and she is back with the second installment of her Maple Hills series. So two students at Maple Hills, Russ and Aurora, meet at a party to celebrate the end of the school year. One thing leads to another, as they do, and they end up having a passionate night. But Aurora is not one to get attached, so she sneaks out the next morning before Russ can even ask her for her last name. Fast forward to a few weeks later, never expecting to see each other again. Surprise, surprise. They're both counselors at the same summer camp for the season. They're at camp to escape some stress and drama in their personal lives, their family lives. So it's really important for both of them to coexist at camp, their summer safe space. The camp has a strict, no fraternizing policy between employees. So to avoid being sent home early, they have to exist peacefully together. No drama, no fraternizing. But did the spark from their one night stand start a fire that they cannot put out? Dun, dun, dun. So this is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. Again, this is out October 3rd of this year. That sounds so good. I immediately added that to my to be read list. Yep. I have it on hold. (laughs) I know we have months and months ahead, but. I also love like the forbidden romance. They can't fraternize what's going to happen. It's so cute. And the cover is adorable. I love that they're wearing like their camp logo Mm t-shirts. Emma, do you know if this is the second book in a series? Do you have any idea if you have to have read the first book? No, I'm pretty sure that the series just takes place on the same college campus. Okay. It's a universe and not like following people. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because Icebreaker was a hockey romance, ice skating and hockey. So it's definitely just different couples at the same college. Got it. Thank you. That sounds so good. Um, Okay. I am going to follow Joe's example and I'm going to cheat a little too. And I am going to talk about two uh, graphic novels or comics right now. And we are going back to summer camp with uh, some middle grade graphic novels. The first one I want to talk about is Lumber Janes by N.D. Stevenson. If you want an idyllic summer story that's set at camp, uh, but you wish there were more fantastical creatures involved and some kick-ass young women, then read Lumber Janes. This is about five hardcore lady types who are best buddies uh, at summer camp where they encounter strange happenings and mythical beings. Let the quest begin. Um, I love this series so much. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it before. It's been out for a while. It's so fun and it's so, it, it's perfect for those kids who want a bit of a fantasy element, but still want, you know, strong characters and like a really fun, more real world setting. It's just a really good time. Um, I'm not sure, Joe or Emma, if either of you have read this before or read any of these series, but highly recommend. Lumberjanes is one of those series that have been on my TBR forever that it's just like I know how much people love them and it looks so beautiful Mm -hmm. I think you have sold me to like bump it up the list knowing that it is both a a little real world and a little fantastical all at the same time plus summer camp it's the time (laughs) yes it's just one of those where like all of these girls personalities are so much fun and then yeah I definitely love that this camp has there's something else going on here. And so you get to kind of solve the mystery and figure out what else is in the woods. Um, But if you are looking for something that is more just set in our world, that was more of my summer camp experience in a way, I have Be Prepared by Vera Brasgal. And this is a semi-memoir about Vera's own experience going to camp. When she was a tween, she wanted so badly to go to camp. All of her friends did it, but 
her family couldn't really afford to send her until they found out that through her church, she is Russian Orthodox, that she could get sent to a Russian camp. Um, So at this camp, you speak Russian, you, you know, go to your Orthodox church, but you're in the middle of the woods. It's very much like any other sort of camp. And Vera finds out very quickly that she hates it. She does not enjoy that she has to go to the bathroom in the woods. She does not enjoy that there are bugs and spiders and snakes all over. And she doesn't enjoy that she is not making friends. She's having a very hard time. Um, But she gets some good advice that, you know, maybe if she finds people who are more like her rather than trying to just suck up to people that she really desperately wants to be friends with, that she'll have a better time. I loved this book so much because it kind of mimicked my own experience at camp, which was not a fantastic one. Um, And so I felt very seen in this book. And I have a feeling that there are other people out there who will feel the same way. It is so fun. It was a really great read. Highly recommend. I'm looking at a sample of it right now. The art is so cute. And the story, it just, it really tugs at your heartstrings from the beginning. I love this cover of her just looking like, oh no, what have I done? Yes. Yes, that is exactly what it is. It's so fun. The heavy duffel bag. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, So that was Lumberjanes by N.D. Stevenson and Be Prepared by Vera Brosgill. My next pick is Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Holly Goldberg Sloan. This is a reverse parent trap for a new generation from New York Times bestselling authors Holly Goldberg Sloan and Meg Wolitzer. Avery, Night Owl, is bookish, intense, likes to plan ahead, and is afraid of many things. Bet, Dogfish, is fearless, outgoing, and lives in the moment. What they have in common is that they're both 12 years old and their dads are dating each other. Bet and Avery are sent against their will to the same camp for summer vacation. Their dads hope that they will find common ground and become friends, and possibly one day, even sisters. Against all odds, the girls soon can't imagine a life without each other. But when the worst happens and their dads break up, Avery and Bette must figure out a way for them to fall in love again. Is keeping a family together as easy as they think it is? So this is just a moving, exuberant, laugh out loud novel about friendship and family told entirely in email letters. So if you are looking for a model a modern epistolary novel, this is the juvenile title for you. It is, like I said, all done in in letters and emails and it's it's super cute so that is two night owl from dogfish by holly goldberg sloan and meg Wolitzer. that sounds so cute i also love that it's um you know a combined family where the dads are dating so it's like there's always that like oh what's future here and then potentially a little parent trappy of like, can we keep our dads together? My next pick is by the queen of YA summer books, in my opinion, and it is The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen. This came out in 2019. And this is the last book we've gotten from her. So I'm eagerly awaiting news that she has something for us, hopefully in the coming year or two. I know she's been writing a couple of books, but so far it doesn't seem like they've panned out. It's been a rough few years. But anyways, this harkens back to happier times in 2019. This book follows Emma Saylor. She doesn't know much about her mom's side of the family. That's just a fact. Her mother passed away when she was 12, and she's been kept distant from her mom's family since. Many years later, It's a little bit of a shock for Emma to learn from her dad that she's being sent to stay with her mom's family up at the lake for the entire summer. She hasn't been to North Lake since she was a child. and She feels like everyone there is a stranger. The lake is actually where her parents met and in true dirty dancing style. I don't know why that's always the reference, but her mom was from the working class area of the lake while her dad is the one who summered on the other side of the lake, the resort end. The more Emma learns about her parents' past, the more she feels pulled in two directions. 
And what would a summer book be without a love interest? Rue is Emma's best friend when they were young, and she would spend summers up at the lake. As they get reacquainted, he helps piece together some of her family history. But he's dreamy, and she quickly finds herself falling you know, for him, of course. But when the summer ends, which side of Emma will win out? Her North Lake side or her resort side? Can things work out with Rue? I don't know. I do know because I've read this. It's so good. But if you're interested in a book that has that sort of summer lake, family drama, love interest vibes, the rest of the story by Sarah Dessen is a great bet. Sarah Dessen was definitely a summer go-to for me when I was a teen as well. They're just summer. Mm -hmm. I think because they, I mean, a lot of them take place in the summer. (laughs) They're just Sarah Dyson. Yeah. Means summer to me as well. Yes. And also like having crushes and will they, won't they kind of things in summer. I remember from like my tween and teen years being like, that's summer, summer romance. It's going to happen for me this year. Well, like friends of the family stuff that like you've grown up with, or you've been around, there's always that like weird dynamic. I feel like when you get to the sort of middle school, high school age where you're just looking at, you know, people differently than you were when Mm -hmm. you were young. Okay. For my last pick, I want to talk about something wild and wonderful by Anita Kelly. This is about Alexi and Ben. And they have a chance encounter because of a rattlesnake while they are both hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. From there, the two men continue to run into each other until Ben decides they should hike together. Alexi came to the trail to be alone, figure himself out, and move on. But he cannot deny the draw that kind-hearted, enthusiastic Ben has over him. So hike together they do. Ben wants to hike the trail to try and stop making bad decisions and as a way to start the next next chapter of his life. Both men have pasts that have left them hurting and unsure of themselves, but maybe they can create a future together that is wild and wonderful. That is Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. It is so sweet. It's such a good romance. And I will say some trigger warnings for uh, religious trauma and homophobia, but it was just a really beautiful story. You come to love Alexi and Ben so much. Um, And the story takes place as I love when romances do this from both of their perspectives. So you'll have, you know, chapter on from Alexi, chapter on from Ben, Um, that's something I really love, especially like when it's done well. So this book does that well. I love their romance. And this book is just so great. If you are looking for more of that kind of backpacking guide, it was, it was really fun. I love that. I love also embracing the other side of what could be camp time for you just as well. Yes, as adults, maybe we're not going to summer camp quite as much, but (laughs) you can still go camp in the woods or go backpacking. My last pick is Last Summer at the Golden Hotel by Alyssa Friedland. This one came out in May of 2021. And, you know, naturally, surprise, surprise, perfect for fans of Dirty Dancing, uh, but also The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So, you know. Let's see what we get here. In its heyday, the Golden Hotel was the crown jewel of the hotter-than-hot Catskills vacation scene. For more than 60 years, the Goldman and Wayne Gold families, both friends and business partners, have presided over this glamorous resort, which served a second home for the well-heeled guests and celebrities. But the Catskills are not what they used to be, and neither is the relationship between the Goldmans and the Wayne Golds. As the facilities and management begin to fall apart, a tempting offer to sell forces the two families together again to make a heart-wrenching decision. Can they save their beloved Golden, or is it too late? Long-buried secrets emerge, new dramas and financial scandal erupt, and everyone from the traditional grandparents to the millennial grandchildren wants a say in the hotel's future. Business and pleasure clash in this fast-paced, hilarious, nostalgia-filled story where the hotel owners rediscover the magic of a bygone era of nonstop fun, even as they grapple with what may be their last resort. That is Last Summer at the Golden Hotel by Alyssa Friedland. 
What a great note to end on that, or well, not quite because Emma still has a pick, but that just sounds so good. Kind of brings it full circle with the like families who camp together or went to summer camp together. Oh, I love it. My last pick is called Long Story Short by Serena Kaler. This came out July, 2022. This was Serena's debut. So how do you prove to your parents that you're totally normal and ready for Oxford University? a far cry from your Berkeley, California home. Obviously you enroll in Shakespeare camp in Connecticut. That'll show them that you're totally equipped to go to university halfway across the world. So that's the situation that Beatrice finds herself in. She is a math genius, but her social anxiety and her homeschooling have meant that she doesn't have very many friends. Her parents suggest summer camp, so Shakespeare camp in Connecticut, and they send her off with a teenage must-do checklist of sorts before they'd be willing to send her away to college. So a summer teen bucket list, if you will. So Beatrice has to figure out how to navigate many firsts that are much harder than calculus. At camp, she's adopted by a group of eclectic theater kids, but she quickly makes an enemy too the handsome camp director's son. Did I mention he's British? So relationships and people prove to be a lot more confusing than math. Can Beatrice figure out how to navigate things like parties, Shakespeare, and double dog dares as easily as she navigates equations? We'll find out. So that is a long story short by Serena Kaler. Her next book is out in January of 2024 called The Calculation of You and Me. So if you find yourself gravitating towards more stories from her, you won't have to wait too too long. I love that it's her parents that come up with the like teenage to-do list for her. That's so fun. Mm -hmm. They want her to have normal, I, I say normal in quotes, but some sort of typical teenage experiences before they sent her off to college. I think that's very cute. Mm-hmm. Well, right. And it's like, you have to do all of these very American things before we send you across the pond. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Emma, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about summer camp books. It was so fun. There are so many more out there too. Well, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Professional Book Nerds podcast, talking all about those summer camp reads. We hope you have found some wonderful things to vibe out as we enter into August here. Remember, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And then, of course, we're on social, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you want to send suggestions or recommendations for future episodes, you can email professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com. With that, Again, thank you so much. And as always, happy reading. Readers can sample and borrow the titles mentioned in today's episode on overdrive.com or in Libby. Our library friends can purchase these titles in Marketplace. Professional Book Nerds is proud to be an Evergreen Podcast signature program. To learn about other Evergreen podcasts, visit evergreenpodcasts.com. Our podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Emma Dwyer and Joe Skelly and presented by Overdrive. To learn more, visit professionalbooknerds.com.